Hi, I'm Father Chris Alar, the Marian Fathers here at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy, and we are happy that you are with us here on Living Divine Mercy on EWTN, and we are super excited because this Sunday is what we've been waiting for. It's Divine Mercy Sunday. Now, we've said in prior shows that when we are forgiven of our sins in the confessional, we no longer face the eternal punishment due to sin, a.k.a. hell. That's gone. But some temporary punishment, a.k.a. purgatory, may still remain. Yes, Christ's sacrifice on the cross was complete and fully redemptive, meaning Christ opened the door to heaven. However, we may still need to clean up a few things on our end before we can walk through that door. We are The Catechism tells us that we must make reparation to divine justice for past sins that we've already been forgiven of, which is why penances have been part of church practice for centuries, and it is why we receive penances from the priest even in the confessional after our sins have been forgiven. For example, I may be forgiven for a mortal sin like adultery, but If I commit such a serious sin, I may need a lot of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving in addition to being forgiven to make reparation to God before I am spotless. And remember, St. Paul says we need to be spotless before we can enter into heaven. In other words, I need to be cleansed from the consequences of past sins, even those I've been forgiven of. This is an example of temporary punishment that may still remain in my soul even after I come out of the confessional, as we said. So, if I don't make reparation for my sins through some kind of penance on this earth, then I will have some, most likely, purgatory time after I die. Yes, purgatory is biblical, such as we read in 2 Maccabees. It is a time of purification from past sin, detachment from current sin, and a process where we are prepared to meet God so we won't want to commit future sin. But as the saints tell us, we really don't want to go there. According to them, the suffering there is way worse than any kind of suffering that we could ever endure on this earth. So, all right, how do we then avoid it? Well, there are a few ways. First, we can do things like penances that we just mentioned, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. But here's the catch. They have to be done with perfect love. We can't fast just to lose weight or pray for our will to be done rather than God's will or give alms just to be recognized. No, they must all be done with no self-love and only for the glory of God. In other words, we must have perfect love. Well, Good luck, we always say with that, because self-love is part of our fallen human nature, and we naturally embrace it. Or we can be freed of temporal punishment in another way, which is having perfect contrition in the confessional. But again, this isn't easy. But that's okay. We are still forgiven even if we are not perfectly sorry for our sins. But when we are truly and fully sorry— We are perfected. And finally, as we said a few weeks ago, another way we can get rid of this temporal punishment on earth to avoid purgatory later, as we said, is through plenary indulgences. And we mentioned that'll be the topic of a future show. But again, this isn't easy because with plenary indulgences, we can have no attachment to sin, even venial. And again, that is very difficult. So what can we do? Well, for those like me who are unable to have all temporal punishment remitted in this life because we don't have perfect love or perfect contrition or perfect detachment from sin, all hope, though, is not lost. 
we can still become perfectly clean, a bride of Christ without stain, even in the midst of our brokenness. How? God gives us one more way. The Extraordinary Grace of Divine Mercy Sunday. Specifically, he told St. Faustina, on that day, Divine Mercy Sunday, the very depths of my tender mercy are opened. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the fount of my mercy. Now, here it is, the most important part. Jesus told St. Faustina, the soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishments. Wow. As Jesus said, when washing the feet of the apostles, do you have any idea what I have just done for you. This is an extraordinary promise that is actually different and greater than a plenary indulgence. Now, this can be a bit confusing because a plenary indulgence is also offered by the church on Divine Mercy Sunday if we do an act of mercy and do, of course, the normal conditions stated by the church to gain that plenary indulgence. But the extraordinary promise of Divine Mercy Sunday, with the same end result as a plenary indulgence, which is the forgiveness of all sin and punishment, is given for only going to confession and Holy Communion. That's it. Unlike a plenary indulgence, no other conditions were specified by Christ, so we can have faith that even the most hardened sinner, no matter how broken, can go to confession, receive Holy Communion, have trust in God's mercy, and be completely wiped clean, as we said, of all sin and punishment. All that is required is receiving Holy Communion worthily in a state of grace with trust in Jesus's promise. What Jesus wants is for us to trust in him and to come back to him in the sacraments without fear of our sins. And when we do, our souls are completely renewed. Remember, however, this is not a magic wand or a rabbit's foot, as I always say. We must have rectification of the will, which is the intent to remove sin from our life as best we can. Not to be perfect, but to try. And remember, confession doesn't have to be done on Divine Mercy Sunday. It just has to be done sometime before so that you're in a state of grace. Then you need to receive Holy Communion with the intention of obtaining this promised grace. Now, this is easy to do, actually. Here's what I want to share. As you prepare to receive Holy Communion at any Mass on Divine Mercy Sunday, even if the priest doesn't mention mercy, it doesn't have to be at three o'clock, any Mass or the vigil the night before, or even if you're just making a spiritual communion, offer up a prayer something like this. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, you promised St. Faustina that the soul that has been to confession, I have, and the soul that receives Holy Communion with trust in divine mercy, I am, will receive the complete forgiveness of all sins and punishment. Lord, please give me this grace. Jesus, I trust in you. You know, make that prayer with complete trust in Jesus and the sincere intent to turn away from sin, and Jesus will give you this grace. In fact, he has to. Otherwise, it would mean he doesn't keep his promises, and nobody is going to claim that. Finally, this extraordinary promise is only for you, and you cannot do it for another, for another soul. So, we Marians recommend that on Divine Mercy Sunday, you do the extraordinary promise for yourself by going to confession and communion, and then do a plenary indulgence as well on Divine Mercy Sunday by doing an act of mercy um, with the normal conditions we said for a plenary indulgence, and offer that for a holy soul. In no other day is such great grace available. So please, if you do nothing else this entire year, don't miss this incredible gift. 
It just may be the most important thing you ever do in your whole life. Now, let's hear a story of a man named Jerry Bauman who gives the needy, those in need of God's mercy, a feast of mercy basically all year long. Let's hear the story of Jerry Bauman. We're all called to love the way Jesus loves, to love and to show mercy. Jesus speaks to the silence of our soul, and we listen. The inspiration came from the Holy Spirit to build a mobile food trailer with divine mercy on it. We're able to go where Jesus wants us to go, and we started giving out pizza, prayer kits, and we were able to reach more families, giving them the message of divine mercy. You could say divine mercy all of a sudden just came alive. Jerry Bauman's trailer ministry, as well as his life, are completely rooted in divine mercy. We have this new Divine Mercy Shrine in our backyard that I built. So I start my day by going out there before the kids get up. I'm able to sit on the bench and pray, talk to Jesus, talk to Mary. Most more talk, I'm able to listen and be quiet and be present to Jesus. The Divine Mercy image, you know, when you look at this image, it's more than comforting. There's so much graces that come from the image of Divine Mercy. Like our Lord has promised, and he told St. Faustina, Whoever venerates this image, you know, he will pour out graces to the soul according to his will and what the soul needs. Sitting in front of the image of divine mercy is so important in my life. I grew up in a Catholic home. It was my mother that instilled the rosary and the chapel of divine mercy in, in our life. We had the image of divine mercy in our home. And so what was quietly taking place in my soul, it just, comforted me. As I was growing, that calling never left. As a teenager, I kind of rebelled. I was much more into the world, kind of left our Lord a little bit behind, got myself in a lot of trouble. And then I started to hear a lot about Mary appearing around the world. Suddenly, I had experience of Our Lady, and it was really converting my heart again and coming back to her son. And so, because of my foundation with Divine Mercy, everything that took place as a young child started to come to the surface again. I asked my mother, I said, Ma, I kind of remember how to pray the rosary. Do you have one of those little pamphlets on the rosary? And she said, uh, yes. And then I said, how about the chapel of Divine Mercy? And so I was drawn back to the image of the Divine Mercy. And I knew everything that was said to me as a young child, it was time. And so I went to confession. I came back to the church. It led me to seeking out our Lord, what his will was for me, how to reach the unloved, the unwanted, and souls that who may feel forgotten, which led me into four years of doing youth ministry. And it just took me in this whole journey. And our Lord showed me more of what it's like to walk with Jesus on the street. Jerry's ministry work eventually allowed him the opportunity to meet Mother Teresa, where he shared the call he felt to return home to Scranton, Pennsylvania with the message of Divine Mercy. I was beginning this new Divine Mercy ministry, and she told me, it's so important. The Eucharist is the center of your life. If Jesus is calling you to do this, you need to depend so much on the Holy Eucharist. Participating in adoration is where I get my strength My children and I came to this parish, St. Thomas More. It's a, such a beautiful parish, very holy families. Father is extremely open to allowing God to work through him and the people of this parish. Jerry, he's a man who knows what it is to be faithful and desires to live that out, not just, of course, in his prayer life, but also in, in his works of mercy and his works of charity. He's attracted people around him who have the means to help. It's an example of God's providence, really. Because of this parish, and helps me in the ministry with the love and support that a ministry apostolate really needs. We have a fairly new prayer group dedicated to our, our Lady of Mercy. It's a children's prayer group. We pray the chaplet at three, 
and the rosary every Wednesday. Through the prayers of the children, we're able to go out as a beautiful ministry and apostles of the parish and go out to people in the valley. I think there's a real hunger out there. When they see the Divine Mercy trailer coming in a neighborhood, they don't know what it is, but they see the big Jesus, we call him, on the side of the trailer, and then we let them know that we have some pizza for them. The local community is a huge help to Jerry's ministry work. All of the pizza is generously donated by a neighborhood restaurant. We're able to evangelize, to talk to families, talk to children by bringing Divine Mercy image to people first because when you bring the image, there's so many graces that come from that, of just looking at the image. We give out pizza, give out the prayer kits. The prayer kits consist of the image of Divine Mercy, pamphlet how to pray the chaplet, rosary beads. We have a, a newsletter that is encouraging the domestic church to basically help families to begin praying in the home, especially in front of the image of Divine Mercy, and then to come follow Jesus. I've learned that working with kids at risk, the most important truth in their soul to know is that they're loved by Jesus and that they know that he is merciful and they can trust in that love. They can trust in Jesus. Once a soul knows that it is loved by our Lord, the soul begins to move to follow Jesus and begin living a holy life. We don't know always what happens. We hear stories. Perhaps someday we'll see some families in church because of what we did years ago. It's more of letting our Lord and His mercy do the work, and we're just a vessel to carry that message in the image. I had a lady, she came over and touched the side of Jesus' face and started to cry. Later on, she told us that she remembers seeing this image when she was a child. Her house burned down, and the only thing left standing in the house was the chimney behind the, the kitchen stove. And on the chimney was the image of Divine Mercy. She said that this image saved her family. And so when she seen it on the side of her trailer and touched the, his cheek, it brought back all that beautiful love and, and memory. The ministry is so simple. It's so much easier to evangelize our Catholic faith by beginning with Divine Mercy. Just bringing the image of Divine Mercy to people and letting go after that is enough because then Jesus takes over. He really does it all. So thank you, Jerry, for being an amazing man in the hands and feet of Jesus, bringing his divine mercy through the works of mercy like feeding the hungry. Now, let's hear in Scripture about the very first Divine Mercy Sunday. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. On the first Divine Mercy Sunday, one week after his resurrection, Jesus appears to his disciples in the upper room and establishes the sacrament of reconciliation as a gift and a channel of his merciful love to repentant sinners. Indeed, in confession, we personally encounter the merciful Jesus himself if we open our hearts in humility and trust. Our Lord tells Saint Faustina, Daughter, when you go to confession, to this fountain of my mercy, the blood and water which came forth from my heart always flows down upon your soul and ennobles it. Every time you go to confession, immerse yourself entirely in my mercy with great trust, so that I may pour the bounty of my grace upon your soul. When you approach the confessional, know this, 
that I myself am waiting there for you. I am only hidden by the priest, but I myself act in your soul. Here the misery of the soul meets the God of mercy. Tell souls that from this fount of mercy, souls draw graces solely with the vessel of trust. If their trust is great, there is no limit to my generosity. The torrents of grace inundate humble souls. The astounding thing is every reference I found to that Sunday after Easter, which for the early church, especially around the fourth century, was very important. Mm -hmm. The octave of Easter was very important. Okay. Um, they point to a uh, passage in the writings of, uh, in a, to a sermon of St. Greg Gregory of Nazianzen, who was considered the theologian for the Eastern church. And he speaks of Easter as a great feast, but he says the octave of Easter is even greater. And they says, we don't know how he comes to that, but they quote it as but it's him the, having said it's it. It's the last of the octave, the eighth day, the eighth is the day, greatest. That it is greater than the feast of Easter itself, but, but he says, without taking anything away from Easter. On one occasion, I heard these words. My daughter, tell the whole world about my inconceivable mercy. I desire that the Feast of Mercy be a refuge and shelter for all souls, and especially for poor sinners. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. On that day, all the divine floodgates through which graces flow are opened. Let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though its sins be as scarlet. My mercy is so great that no mind, be it of man or of angel, will be able to fathom it throughout all eternity. Now before we go, we'd like to share with you some interesting clips of Divine Mercy Sundays of the past. From the Shrine of Divine Mercy in Stockbridge, Massachusetts, Mercy Sunday. Welcome to the Shrine of Divine Mercy in Stockbridge, Massachusetts, to our celebration of Mercy Sunday, 1991. The Eternal Word Television Network presents Mercy Sunday, reaching out. Welcome to the celebration of the Feast of Divine Mercy here at the Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. It's a very special day for all of us, a day to turn to God's mercy. This is a day when the floodgates are open. So well, now some of the students have come here not only as a pilgrimage experience, but also to volunteer here on Eden Hill because we have so yeah. many pilgrims come this day that uh, they were working in and around the property, I understand, mm -hmm. to help with the setup. As you can see, our flags are at half mast today on this very special Mercy Sunday as we mourn the passing of our beloved Holy Father, Pope John Paul II. You see the statue in front of the shrine of the Divine Mercy. Holy Father said that the canonization and the feast um, on Mercy Sunday that year was the happiest day of his life, and now he has died on the vigil of the feast. Your thoughts on the connection? Well, he's, uh, he's an actor and a playwright, and you wonder if he didn't stage this too. <laughs> Go to Brother Chris Alar, who has a special message for us. Thank you, Father Joe. Uh, you remember me. My name is Brother Chris. I'm a Marian seminarian. You may remember me from last year's show when we talked about our parish work. This year, I'd like to tell you a bit about our seminarian program. And the thought that, you know, what God really desires more than justice is mercy. Mm -hmm. You know, human judgment just sees what's on the surface, mm -hmm. but God sees what's in the heart. Mm -hmm. And he sees and loves in us what he sees and loves in his son, Jesus. Mm -hmm. As an actor, you know, you don't always get to play characters that uh, you believe everything that you're saying. So sometimes I think this is maybe one of the greatest role. I mean, who knows? God can do amazing things. So maybe there's something mm -hmm. bigger than this. But sometimes I think I don't know if I'll ever play a role as deep 
as uh, spiritual, as, as loving as this world. This is a very special show today because it's Divine Mercy Sunday during the 100th anniversary of Fatima. And as we'll see, the message of Fatima and Divine Mercy go hand in hand. But before we get into that, I want to first introduce my co-host, a fellow Marian, Father Chris Aylar. Welcome, Father Chris. Thank you, Father Joe. It's good to be back on, certainly on a day that's actually nice, yes. rather than snowing. Last year we had the snow. We can introduce our next guest and good friend, Teresa Tamio, the host of popular radio program, Catholic Connection. Welcome to our program, it's Teresa. It's great to be here, Father. Well, thank you again, everybody, for joining us, and please be with us next week as we have a very special guest. I'll be sitting down with Mark Wahlberg, talking to him about his new movie, Father Stew, and talking to you about the priesthood. Now, we're excited. Over the last several weeks, we've been preparing you to receive the grace coming up this Sunday is Divine Mercy Sunday. Now, if you've missed it, that's okay. You can pick up a copy of my book, Understanding Divine Mercy. It's an easy-to-read resource that will help explain everything thing that we've been talking about. The information is there right on your screen. And finally, please join us on Divine Mercy Sunday right here on EWTN starting at noon as we'll have a show from the National Shrine of Divine Mercy followed by the Liturgy of Divine Mercy Sunday. And until then, may Almighty God bless you and yours in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.